Hello guys, this is the lecture series on introduction to cyber security and it's a very popular subject nowadays that you will find the syllabus in the syllabus of MSc Computer Science or Information Technology, MTech IT, MCA, okay. And we have integrated MSc IT programs for which I have been designing this lecture series. So myself, Dr. Devos Dibora, well, so this is the first lecture and in this lecture I will go through malware and its types. Okay. So you have to concentrate on the lecture from the very beginning to the end and one question will be asked at the end. So you need to answer or comment that question's answer. Let's begin. So malware. What is malware? Malware is a sort for malicious software. Do you remember that? Malware is a sort of for malicious software. And you all know the, what is the meaning of malicious. Means that is not good of course. Those software that can be used to compromise computer functions. Okay. Like steal data, bypass access controls or other wise that cause harm to the host computer. So malware is a broad term that refers to a variety of malicious programs. Clear? So you have to note down that malware stands for the malicious software. Okay. So now different types of malware exist. Those different terms you also have to know. I think you already familiar with few of them. The first one is virus. So virus, this is a malicious executable code. Remember, you may underline or you can take a screenshot of this also. This is a malicious executable code attached to another executable file. The virus spreads when an infected file is passed from system to system. Nowadays, you all are aware with the means outbreak of coronavirus, you have seen that you have gone through the different news that if one is infected and you come closer to that person, then you may also get infected through his body fluids or like that. Isn't it? The same thing. This, is, this virus is also an executable code attached to some another executable file. And it spreads with the hull of that other executable file. Virus can be harmless or they can modify or delete data and opening a file can trigger a virus and once it is active it will infect other programs on that computer. That's sufficient for writing virus. Now, adware, another one malicious. Okay. okay. So this is a malware, this is a type of malware that uh, this is sort for advertising supported software. Do you remember? Advertising supported software. That automatically delivers some advertisements. Sometimes you have seen that <coughs> different pop-up ads come appearing in front of your that browser. Means that browser window. Isn't it? So that is also an example of such adware means it includes pop-up ads on websites and advertisements that are displayed by that software. Open time software and application offer free versions. You have seen that, free versions that come bundled to it, adware. And these adware, this means these advertisements are usually sponsored or authored by some advertisers and serves as a review new generating tool. Got it. So that's why the advertising purpose of spreading advertisement is nothing but to means uh, generate some revenue. Okay, so that is adware. Then worms. Worms replicates themselves on the SIP cell on the system and attaching themselves to different files and looking for pathways between computers, such as computer network that shares common files and storage areas. So got it? But it, it seems like uh, that of virus, but there exists difference between virus and worm. You have to note it down. 
you think that you see I am putting in red so that that will help you to note it down. You can take a screenshot of this. So a virus needs a host program to run, but worms can run by themselves. After a worm affects a host, it is able to spread very quickly over the network. So overall, it slow down the networks. Both. Both are software programs created to automatically perform specific operations. Okay. And they can be used in botnets. And you know what is botnet? Botnet, the collections of computer to be controlled by third parties. For DDoS attacks, I know that you might be hearing about what? Distributed denial of service attacks. I have discussed this in my theory lectures in the classroom. Okay. So as spam bots that render advertisements on websites, as web spiders that, as, that scrap server data, and for distributing malware disgust as popular search items on download, download sites. Okay. So websites can guard against bots with capture tests that verify user as human. And you may note it down. You will see that often in this, uh, this website, you need to verify a capture. So that is for what? To verify human or not. So actually, it is protecting us from both. Next, bug. Bug is a flaw that produces an undesired outcome. Got it? So you may note down, you may underline the term flaw and undesired outcome. And these flaws are usually the result of human error and typically exist in the source code or compilers of a program. Minor bugs only slightly affect the program's behavior and as a result can go for long periods of time before being discovered. So you see that minor bugs are really um, very dangerous. Means it's, it's a kind of slow poisons because you cannot discover it at the first days. Okay. And more significant bugs can cause crashing also or freezing also. Okay, so security bugs, you may note it down that security bugs are the most severe type of bugs and can allow attackers to bypass user authentication. You already know what is authentication process. I have discussed this in my previous lectures and override access privileges or steal that. Bugs can be prevented with developers' education. Of course, you have to be aware with the flaw describes as a developer and quality control and code analysis tools. Many times ask that how these different types of malware can be stopped. So you need to write like that. Then spyware. The purpose of the spyware is to steal private information from a computer system for a third party. So it collects information and sends it to the hack. Then rootkit. It is a type of malicious software designed to remotely access or control a computer without being detected by users or security program. And once it once it has been installed, it is possible for the malicious party behind the rootkit to remotely execute file. Remember, rootkit is related to the remotely control or access your device. Okay. And access or steal information, modify system configuration, alter software. Okay, so its prevention, detection, and removal can be difficult due to their stealthy operation because it is under remote control. Then spyware I have already decided, discussed. Okay, then Trojan horse, that is also a very popular type. A, this is a malware that carries out malicious operations under the appearance of a desired operation such as playing an online game. What you all do, is it it? So these are the references, you may go through it. I have collected some information from this site. And whatever the malware types I have discussed today, try to bring some, date means common examples, mean common days finding examples on that. And now coming to the today's question, today's question is, what is logic bomb? So what is logic bomb? You comment your answer. I'll meet you in the next class. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.